All right, hello everybody. This is video three of week two, look up week of this free series that, that Dermot and I are putting together in collaboration. So uh, I'm, I'm really sticking to fundamentals here. I don't want to get particularly complex. I, I'm leaving all the, the very kind of crazy stuff to, to dim. Uh, so I'm going to look at some ifs, count ifs, and I just want to talk a little bit about some product. But some ifs and count ifs. You know, if for anybody that, that's you know really experienced with Excel, this will be your bread and butter. And I do think for most modelers, there are maybe maybe 10, 15 functions, maybe for some people a few more that you're using to do 80 to 90% of your work. And I think some sort of lookup function, whether it's X lookup, index match, whatever it is, would be one of them. I think just a core understanding of the, the logical arguments using operators, you know, greater than, equals than, less than, and understanding the power of those is something to, to, to keep in, in your kind of core skill set. And then I'd say things like sum ifs and count ifs are also part of that core range of functions that modelers turn to almost day in or week in, week out. And they're really simple once you start using them a lot. So I do think it's a little bit different. If you think of what we're doing with like an X lookup, typically you're trying to find an entry and extract or look up basically some data that, that is relevant to that data point. When we look at things like sum ifs and count ifs, as you can probably guess from the name, we're, we're looking to perform some sort of aggregation calculation, whether it is a sum or a count. So quite often with this stuff, we'll be dealing with slightly different data. And in the workbook, you see an example of this. So we're starting to look at things like records of something transactions in this in this case as ever because you're you're seeing stuff from our sarah's bakery story arc in full stack modeler we're looking at pies sold on different days and different months of of, of the year basically and we want to sum these values and what it means is that whereas before when we were doing an x lookup we probably in a lot of the situations we'd be using XLOOKUP for, we'd have one row somewhere with chicken pies and some data like price. This time we see chicken pies popping up multiple times within our data set. And we've got other fields of data, the day of the week, the month of the year, and then the quantity sold. So clearly what we're going to try and do in these exercises is sum the quantities sold based on some criteria that we're going to pick from these other fields of data. And that's what I walk through. So here's the first example that I show. We're looking up that table of data. The first part of the syntax is the sum range. It's the thing that you want to sum. And then after that, in all the following sections, it's choose your criteria range and then choose the criteria that you want to sort of filter the sum calculation down by. So in this simple example, the, the criteria range one is the month of the year, and the criteria is January, which we're picking up from a cell. One word of warning, we still have sum if and count if in Excel. I tend not to use sum if or count if even when I've only got one criteria that I need for my calculation, because the syntax is slightly different. So I, I just think it's a bit confusing to start switching between sum if and sum ifs and count if and count if. So even if there's just one criteria, I'll use sum ifs, which has the, 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 you know, the flexibility or the capability to allow you to enter. I don't know what the exact number is, but it allows you to enter a lot of criteria if you need them. And that's the point that I come on to a bit later on here. So also, by the way, um, some of the examples, I don't use the dynamic setup, but you can use this dynamic spill uh, functionality that we've got with modern Excel. So as long as you're highlighting within the range, uh, the criteria, sorry, a range, then you should get the result back as a spilled range as well. So then I step this up on the workbook on, on the sum ifs tab and the count ifs tab to the point where you've got, you know, a number of different uh, criteria. And the only thing that I would point out here is that, you, you know, you, you can 
leverage the, the, the freedom you have in Excel, I guess, to present your outputs and the capabilities the user has in lots of different ways. So in this example, we've got a sum ifs. We've actually got three criteria being used. So if I scroll back up to the data set, we're using all three of these fields to filter down the, uh, the sum formula. Where was it? Here. We've got a table structure that's going to make sure that we are presented with all of the quantities sold for each of the pie types and all of the days of the week, no matter what. And then the user has a drop down so that they can pick between the different months. So whilst I think it's quite a simple formula to sort of get your head around and start using, don't forget that you have lots of flexibility with something like some ifs when it comes to building dashboards and, and creating the right sort of insights for your stakeholders. There's a few examples at the bottom. Uh, it's all pretty straightforward. Count ifs is exactly the same. You're just counting instead of uh, summing. And then some product, uh, I wanted to talk about some products because some product is, well, it's probably been one of my favorite functions uh, for a very long time. Uh, maybe because you know, in my early career in different companies, in, in quite small ponds, I was one of the only people that understood how to use it. And that meant that I could solve problems that lots of other people couldn't do. And I, I've always loved it. I've always turned to it for relatively complex solutions, but there's an argument now that you, you really hardly need it at all with the new dynamic array capabilities we've got in Excel. And I'll show you why. So here's our, our data set, which has expanded a little bit. We've got quantity sold and we've got a product price field there. And what some product would allow you to do pretty simply is take two arrays, the array of the quantity sold and the array of the product price, and it's going to multiply them out in the structure that they're in row by row. So each quantity is going to, going to be multiplied out by the associated price in the same position in the second array. The only kind of thing I would say here is I would in most situations, I would be very comfortable just adding helper columns. So I, I wouldn't try to typically solve this in one cell. I'd be adding a revenue field and, and just adding that extra level of granularity. But you look in battle situations, you might need to get to the answer quickly. So some products would get you to the right answer there. This I threw in just, just for completeness. So for those of you that liked the old style array setup, you could have set this formula up and then hit control shift enter. Pretty sure it was control shift enter. And that adds the curly brackets and sets the calculation up as an array. But here's the problem. You can just do it with a sum formula now. So this never used to work before we had the, the spill capability in Excel. And I'll show you why. If you take off the sum part, look what I'm doing here. I'm just multiplying out these two arrays and I've just shortened it just so that it, it you know fits on the page here. This multiplies out the two arrays and the results just spill. And that never happened before. So you couldn't get that answer without potentially the curly brackets. Uh, but now it does. So all I would have to do to make this work in one cell is just add sum and you get the, albeit that has, I was going to say it's a different answer, but that's because I've used a shortened um, array just to fit it in this space. Uh, if I'd included the whole array, it would match the number here. So there you go. So for me, for most use cases, some products is maybe a little bit irrelevant, which I'm a little bit devastated about. If you look further down the sum product tab, I do just make the point that you can actually use, you can use some product with different arguments to do things like count the number of, of items rather than just multiply things out. And uh, is there anything else? Oh yeah, so keep having a scroll down this tab. Uh, there's, You'll see sometimes people using things like the double uh, uh, subtraction sign or the hyphen, double hyphen. Sometimes you'll see people using the N function. And sometimes you will just see people using some products and, and kind of multiplying 
uh, array calculations out by one, th one another with brackets. All of this is to do with converting uh, the results of these individual calculations and arguments into ones and zeros that can be used as part of the bigger sum product formula. So I've added some notes about this here. I still think it's worth learning this because you will probably still see people using sum product. I don't think everybody is completely comfortable yet with the idea that you can just use sum and, and these array uh, formulas or these array ranges. So some product, I love it. I'll probably still use it a little bit, a little bit like I do with choose, but I, I'm afraid to say, I think its uniqueness has probably lost some of its value. The one last thing I just want to show you, and this is really just sowing the seed for, for the future. Now, uh, I wasn't going to do this, so I'm going to have to do this on the fly. At no point so far have I heavily used Excel tables and I'm conscious of that because they are a huge addition to the work that you do. So, so why am I showing you this? Uh, it just dawned on me when we looked at some of these functions, uh, formulas down here. If you look at that, this is an example, maybe for the first time, where the sum range has been off screen. So if you imagine coming into this quite cold, that formula doesn't really tell you much. And instantly I had to start scrolling around to look for the data that I wanted. Now, what I could have done was set uh, my data up and I've just copied some of this data, but I could have set this up as a table. And I'm gonna do that quickly and assume you know uh, how to do that as well. Essentially, I went to insert table and then it asks whether your table has headers. So this is now an Excel table and best practice would suggest that I would do something like uh, name my table with a relevant name. And now if I went down to, I probably haven't got all the fields in, but let me just do this here. Let's say I wanted to do a sum ifs. Uh, it's not going to work because I haven't got the right things, but I'm just going to show you this in principle. The moment that I highlight the whole uh, range of data points within the product field, you can see that the formula has changed here. And this is called structured referencing. And this is referencing the name of the table and the name of the field. So uh, let me just carry on. Imagine that I wanted to have the criteria range as, as, as the months, and then the criteria would be uh, months here. It's not a perfect example, but what I wanted to just show you was suddenly this, this formula becomes more, um, uh, e it becomes easier to interpret versus this. And what I'll do maybe next week as, as, a, a, an, as, as a video on its own, I'll do a whole 10 minute video on Excel tables and, and the basics of structured referencing. Because I think once you get into this realm where you're looking up or summing data, counting items in big data sets, Excel tables can add enormous value. That's it for today. What I'm going to come on to probably tomorrow and Friday, I'd like to touch on offset a little bit, just the fundamentals. I may also look at a little bit of indirect, but I'm conscious Dim has done an awesome video on that. Um, and maybe I will just touch on Excel tables as well. All right, that's it. See you tomorrow.